Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix and once again I am joined with Minho on this crazy adventure that we call life. Mm. <laughs> That's it? You, eh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so we're gonna continue to read the Harvey X Reader but hopefully after this one we're gonna have a little bit of a break. <laughs> Because uh, we'll finally introduce the wheel segment with Minho, and we'll get some different options <laughs> for, for- Got uh, some wacky options on there. Yeah, I can't wait for you guys to see the wheel name later, but uh, there, there's some options alright. <laughs> some good and bad options. <laughs> but uh, we don't have to worry about that right now, because uh, we gotta talk to this uh, sexy man that's called Dr. Harvey. And, oh, Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that, like, anytime we, when we're playing Stardew Valley, I, like, see him, and I'm like, Ooh! Ooh! Harvey! Harvey! <laughs> just, like, just on the regular, just whenever we're playing. <laughs> it's him! It's the one we're reading about! Yeah, it's like, oh my god, it's the guy! <laughs> it's him! Yeah, the, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that you can actually get into a relationship with him. Like, he's labeled as single. Yeah. I think I just have a bias of, like, doctors just not being single. <laughs> like, they come out, like, or, like as soon as they get the doctor, like, the, the PhD to be a doctor, they immediately get a wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's part of the deal. Yeah. It's actually a requirement for the PhD. Yeah, that when they look in over the, like, the doctor's resume, like, well, you qualify for most things, but you need to have a family in order to, to work here, so. God dang it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, this one, we're on chapter 12 right now, and it's My Past Haunts Me. Apparently, Bill Cipher's got some fucking demons from uh, fucking Zuzu City. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, what do I have to flip? The first thing I looked at was my mug, and <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah, let's flip that. No, 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 I don't want to break that. That's valuable for me. Oh, Breaks I his heads, intact his tail. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I got my pack of playing cards. You want to be the 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 front of it, or the the back of it? Uh, front. Okay. It's the front. I get to go first. Boop. All right. Author's note. All right. Cool. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Stacey. No, I'll read it. Oh, okay. Uh, note <laughs> from me, I am currently in the midst of uni assessments, so if my updates take a bit longer than usual, I'm sorry. I'll try to get- I'll try and get around to it as soon as I can. Girl, Thanks, guys. In the, the future, juice. you're fine. <laughs> we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> Day 7 of fall. You had just finished harvesting some crops on a particular cold and chilly day. The air icy. The valley was beginning to feel the winter chill, although winter was not yet rolled around. You found yourself once more thinking about the future, knowing you would not be spending your Christmas with your family. Ever since you and your ex broke up and you left the country, oh, and you left for the countryside, your family hasn't even bothered to call. They were frustrated at your decision to leave home and break up with your ex, but you are an adult. You you say to yourself, and you. And you are allowed to make the sorts of decisions by, by yourself, especially if you're going, if it's going to be happier that way. W was her ex like a dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Was it like a require? Like, did we miss something in the fine print when we got like the father's will thing that we got the farm? And it's like I yeah. give you my farm so you can live a happy life. Uh, the only requirement is that you had to break up with your bitch-ass boyfriend <laughs> and leave home. <laughs> what if there was, like, a prequel to this game where you play in the city? City... City do... no. Well, what's a good name? What? The city Lights Valley. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, Zuzu City. Yeah, <laughs> you're making up names, I'm like, oh, it has an official name. <laughs> Dude, once we get far in Stardew Valley, we can get the expanded pack. And then we can- I think we can actually go to Zuzu City. What? There's an expansion for Stardew? Yeah, yeah, like, I- I'm gonna probably talk to the group about doing it, but, um... 
I recommend doing it after you complete the bundles, because then it unlocks more things to do post-game and everything like that. New areas for us to explore, new NPCs, more people to romance, new items. Mm. Yeah, it's super cool. Keeps the game fresh. <laughs> is it a mod, or is it something you buy? I think it's a mod, but I have the mod thing up, so I can send it. <laughs> like nah. Sure, yeah. You say nah? <laughs> No, I said, ah. Oh, I think you said, like, nah, and we're not doing that for the month. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Secretly, you think that they are annoyed that you haven't offered to sell the farm and split the profit between them all. Your brother was certainly unpleased with your father, your grandfather's will, considering he had left the most valuable asset to you and not him. But that was not your fault, and although you didn't know the reasoning, your grandfather had chosen you to take on his farm. You miss the warm, feel comforting feeling of being surrounded by loved ones during the holidays this year, but the sacrifice needed to achieve that was not plausible for you. As you looked over the valley in the distance, you felt the tears curing down your cheek. You had always dreamed of living on the countryside, surrounded by nature and peace, but you never thought it would have to come at the cost of losing your family. Milo's sharp bark sh snapped you out of your thoughts. You quickly wiped the tear away and set, and set back to work, the day offering a new hope and possibilities. Was our, was our family, like, really horrible? <laughs> <laughs> maybe? Maybe that's why you left? Yeah, from, like, just, like, the paragraphs? They sound like gold diggers. <laughs> <laughs> Evening. <laughs> <laughs> The evening quickly rolled around, but that same sinking feeling of loneliness still crept around you. Dude, you don't have to be lonely! Harvey's right next door! <laughs> no, fast. you're just misunderstanding. Yeah. We got no riz. <laughs> <laughs> your mind was puzzled as you remembered the hurt of your own flesh and blood had caused you. That's when you decided to change your current loneliness by going to the saloon. We're gonna drink away our problems! Let's go! Yay! Yo, we're, we're turning into Shane, no. <laughs> Let's go. You swung the doors open, greeted by the saloon's usual regulars like Pam and Shane. Fuck you, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> you stepped inside, the, the warmth of the cozy interior providing a, a welcome contrast to the, ch the chill outside. Shane gazed at you, looking up from his drink. Don't fucking, don't look at him. He's just, he's just a hobo. <laughs> Man, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you saw him. Sat at the table with Maru and Elliot. Oh my god, I got my two husbands, like, sitting with each other? Oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> Your cheeks- Wait, Maru's a dude? No, I meant Elliot. <laughs> okay, never mind. I was gonna be so confused. <laughs> oh yeah, my two husbands, Hartvi and Maru. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you felt your cheeks redden. You quickly hurried to the bar to avoid him. You were not in the mood for any awkward tension, but you were also worried about him since his injuries in the mines. God damn it, you said to yourself. You were going to be a bit of an emotional suburb bitch. <laughs> yeah. You took a deep breath trying to compose yourself. As you sat at the bar, you couldn't help but steal glances over at his table. He seemed to be laughing with Maru and Elliot, completely unaware of your presence. You felt a pang of jealousy, but managed to quickly pull it away. There's nothing to be jealous- never mind. No, I'm not having this argument again. <laughs> <laughs> Pam approached you, a knowing smile on her face. Looks like someone's got a crush, she teased. You rolled your eyes, trying to hide your embarrassment. It's not like that, he replied, hoping to end the conversation. Pam shrugged. Suit yourself, but I think you two would be cute together. She strode off towards Mayor Lewis. You felt your cheeks blush. <laughs> hey there, Bill. What can I get for you? Gus, the friendly bartender, asked with a smile, slightly catching you off guard. Just a cider, please, you replied, smiling back at Gus. Gus poured you a perfect pint and set it down at the bar. You handed him the money and turned to analyze the room once more, trying to stay in the background. That's when Shane approached you. No! Hey! Pepper spray up! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you know what? Because I, I value you so much, you get to start reading now. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Okay, that's when Shane approached you. Hey, Bill, he said, blunt yet warm. Hey, Shane, you replied, taking aback back by his greeting. I'm sorry if I came across too sharp when we first met. He half smiled, slightly embarrassed upon remembering it. I'm just a miserable old man. Uh huh. Is he, he's old? Yeah, Hi, how he's, old is he? He's what? He's classified as an older bachelor. What is that, like 30s? I think so. Yeah. Because Harvey and <laughs> Elliot are also classified as older bachelors. Okay. It's okay, don't apologize, he giggled, just happy to be around someone seemingly funny. This valley gets a little boring sometimes, don't you think? He asked. I find it a nice break from the city. I don't particularly get bored when there is always work to do. Of course, you are a farmer. You must constantly be busy. Nearly always. You and Shane chatted for about an hour or so, you consuming more alcohol in the process. <laughs> he told you about his struggles with alcoholism. <laughs> And how he was working on turning his life around. Bro, why are you in the saloon if you're trying to turn your life around? That's, That's so hypocritical. Just some irony right there. He listened intently, feeling a sense of empathy for him. Our, As the night we, went on. Do we have empathy? Dude, if I saw someone at a bar and they were just like drinking and they were like, yeah, I'm trying to work on my alcoholism, I'm like, mm, okay, bud. That's like someone like. Like, they're eating, like, a big-ass thing of, like, chocolate cake, and they're like, I'm really trying to work on my diet, like, eating <laughs> yeah, healthier. I'm really working on my diet. <laughs> I'm working it's tough out here. Yeah. <laughs> As the night went on, you found yourself getting more comfortable around Shane, the alcohol completely loosening you up. He had a funny and reassuring demeanor that made it easy to open up to him. He talked about your dreams of expanding your farm and your worries about the upcoming winter. I know how you feel, Shane said, nodding sympathetically. Winter can be tough, especially when you're alone. You nodded in agreement, feeling grateful for his understanding. You were surprised at how easy it was to talk to him, considering your initial awkward encounter. You had just become best friends with the town alcoholic, <laughs> proving that external looks aren't always indicators about a person's personality. I don't... don't know about you, Shane, but everything is very blurry right now, you mumbled. The alcohol coursing through your system. You had consumed about six pints of cider and a scotch on the rocks in the past hour, a drinking game that even Shane was impressed by. Shane was also tipsy, but Marnie had been monitor monitoring his drinking from afar. That's alcohol for you, hun, Shane giggled. Marnie approached Shane and requested he left with her before he went too far with his drinking. He obliged and you waved them both off, leaving you alone at the bar. Wait, are Marnie and Shane, like, what's their relationship? I think Marnie's his aunt. Ah, okay. Yeah. Bill, a stern voice spoke. You instantly knew who it was. He turned on the bar stool to see Harvey towering <sighs> above you, a glass of water in his hand. I suggest you drink this. It seems you have uh, drunk way over your limit. He looked up at Harvey, surprised by his sudden appearance. You had been so engrossed in your conversation with Shane that you hadn't even noticed him approaching. Thanks, Harvey, you said, taking the glass from him and taking a long sip. The cold water felt refreshing against your parched throat. Harvey looked at you with a concerned expression. Are you okay? It isn't like you to drink like this. You sighed, feeling a pang of guilt. I've just been feeling so stressed out lately, and it's not like me. You look down at your feet. Would you like to talk to me about it? Harvey offered, a weak smile escaping the right side of his mouth. Yes, please. Your drunken self had decided to open up. You'd realize in the morning that if you were sober, you would have politely declined. Let's go for a walk. We can escape all the noise here, he replied, looking slightly relieved that you were actually going to explain more about yourself. Apart from the basics, Harvey was also very li Har Harvey also knew very little of your background too. All right, you smiled, the alcohol filling you up with excitement. You quickly jumped from the stool in a clumsy manner, tumbling onto the floor below with a thud. You heard a few chuckles from some of the other patrons at the bar, but you were too embarrassed to look up and see who it was. All right, I'll let you read the rest. Hey, All right, that's fine. No one. Uh, uh -huh, I want to read for Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I picked you specifically for this. Sure, alright! <laughs> Harvey quickly rushed over to help you up, grabbing your arm and pulling you up by your feet. 
Okay, honey, maybe you shouldn't consume this much alcohol in the future. A strain coming from his voice as he dragged you up. You felt the embarrassment melt away, and all you could do was giggle instead. Harvey led you out of the bar carefully, his arm around you to stop you re repeating your previous tumble. <gasps> We're holding it! <laughs> oh my god, so lewd. Yeah! <laughs> you walked you walk for a bit alongside one another, the autumn air cold and crisp. You had continued to giggle over minor things. Oh my god, this is like me! <laughs> a, a light and funny atmosphere between the both of you. Harvey had updated you on his injury, which he claimed to be healing nicely. But as you gazed up at him beside you, you felt that similar feeling wash over you. Is it normal to be lonely? You asked, a sheepish tone in your voice. Harvey seemed to be stunned by your question, but also deeply saddened by it. He took a moment before responding, his usual confident demeanor f flattering slightly. I think it's normal, a normal feeling to have, especially when you're going through a big change like you are. Moving to a new place, leaving behind old relationships, it can be tough. You nodded, appreci appreciating his understanding. I guess I just miss having someone to share my life with, you know? Like, someone who can truly understand me and is there for me through everything? Harvey looked up at you with a soft expression, knowing that deep down he felt the exact same way. Oh my god, is this gonna be like one of those stupid fucking things? Like, maybe we can be alone together! And then, like, <laughs> the former relationship- I can see it now! Cause this then is Bill just goes, nah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and she's like, sorry, I have commitment issues. <laughs> Oh uh, shit, where did I leave off when I said all that super shit? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, exactly I got it. Way. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I it's not easy to find that kind of connection, but it's worth it when you do. You both walked in silence for a few moments before Harvey spoke up again. If it's any cons consolation, you have a lot of people here who care about you. You made a lot of friends in such a short time, and I know for a fact that they would all be there for you if you ever needed them. He paused before finishing. And I am one of them. It is gonna be like that shit! It is! <laughs> <laughs> you smiled at his words, feeling a warmth in your chest. Thank you, Harvey. It means the world. You re he returned your smile, his eyes sparkling in the moonlight. Of course, Bill. I'm always here for you. Harvey gazed at you, now seemingly like the broken girl of the valley. What has given you these feelings, Bill? He gently asked. Oh my god, we're we gonna get into our trauma? <laughs> Let's go! Trauma, trauma backstory! <laughs> <laughs> you sighed heavily, your breath visible in the chilly air. I don't know, Harvey. Maybe it's the fact that I left everything behind to come here. My family, my friends, my old life. I thought this would be a fresh start, a chance to find something new and exciting. But lately, it just feels lonely because they aren't around, and they don't seem to care either. Harvey nodded slowly, understanding the weight of your words. It must be difficult for you to leave everything behind like that. I did the same. He offered a reassuring smile along with his words. I've lived in Zuzu City my entire life. I trained as a doctor there in, in the top tier medical school. Now this guy's fucking flexing on us. <laughs> I have I went a to Harvard. I graduated top of my class. I have a PhD. I was valedictorian. <laughs> I made seven figures. Yeah. <laughs> but when I decided to, to to up and leave to have my own clinic here in Pelican Town, do you regret it? You asked. At first, perhaps, but now, no. His face was blank with expression of silence hung over both of you as you tried to comprehend one another's struggles. The similarities between you two seemed uncanny. You were nearly back at the farm. <laughs> I had a pretty nasty ex. You began to overshare, but you felt comfortable unloading on, onto Harvey. He turned to you, now listening you more intently. Hey, we- oh my god, we did have a shitty ex. Alright, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> called it. Good. He was controlling, a straight, stuck-up asshole, the alcohol removing all filters from your words. He just made me feel like shit, like I was literally worth nothing, and my parents loved this guy. They still do. They have him around for dinner and go on little dates with him, it seems. 
A tear began to roll down your cheek as you gazed up at the stars above, reminding you of, reminding you of the first night Harvey had watched you home. Harvey paused, removing his arm around you to look at me, you more directly. He gently placed his thumb on your cheek, wiping away the tear. Yes! <laughs> wiping away the tear and cupping your face. The feeling of being under understood matched the alcohol caused you to burst out in tears in front of him, something you were no longer able to control. Even on your own, you refused to cry, feeling it to be a weakness. Without hesitation, Harvey pulled you into a hug, holding you tightly as you cry in his chest. It's okay, let it out. He whispered softly, the soft glow from the moon illuminating his face. You don't have to be strong all the time, Bill. It's okay to feel vulnerable and let your emotions out. You clung to him, feeling safe and protected in his embrace. It was as if all your worries and fears had melted away just by being in his arms. After a few mo minutes, you pulled back and wiped your tears away with the back of your hand, refusing to give into your negative emotions so easily. Thank you, you whispered, feeling grateful for Harvey's comforting presence, his hand now cupping your cheek once again. Harvey? You began. Your drunk state made you feel in invincible in this moment. You knew what you had to do. You had to confess your feelings. Now or never! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Oh, shit. Now or never? Hold on. This is chapter 12. How many chapters are there? Uh, 27? Yeah. I don't know about this one. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I hope she says- I hope they actually do something. <laughs> Not like that, I mean like, just like, confess. <laughs> that's that, that's where the mature tag comes from. Yeah, yeah, this is where it comes in. <laughs> now we finally know. No, actually the mature tag came from the hand-holding. I didn't expect that. Oh my god, yeah. Wow, that was, that was so lewd, oh my god. Yeah, that was really risky content. I don't know, like, <laughs> what the author was thinking, but you know what? Yeah. Like, we all take risks sometimes, so we gotta applaud it. <laughs> 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 Alright, chapter 13. Is this it? <laughs> Is- I don't know, is- is this it? <laughs> is it? I don't know. I don't okay. know what- what this is. <laughs> yeah, what even is this? Yeah, it's like a Junimo. <laughs> it's- it's like, <laughs> just chilling in <laughs> our house. <laughs> like, oh my god, what is that? <laughs> uh, chapter 13, is this it? Yep. Harvey. You began, your drunken state made you feel invincible in this moment. You know what you had to do, you had to confess your feelings, now or never. Well, we're here, Harvey's sudden interruption jolts you back to reality. You, look, you looked up to see the familiar sight of your, uh, familiar sight of your ha farmhouse illuminated by the moonlight. You let out a sigh, feeling both relieved and disappointed at the same time. Thanks for walking me home, you said, your voice still shaking from the emotional outburst. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Bill. You know I'm always here for you, he replied with a soft smile. I just wanted to say, too, thank you for your help the other day. I owe you massively. It's fine. Looks like we both saved one another, you giggled, taking a step towards the door. You found your key in your coat pocket. Let me help, Harvey insisted, remembering you previously struggling with the door. You smiled and stepped aside, remembering, too, allowing Harvey to open the door for you. He took the key from you and inserted it into the lock, turning it with ease. The door opened and he held it open for you to step inside. Wait, he began, looking at Harvey as he prepared to leave. Why don't you just come in for a bit? I'd love to show you what I've done to the place since I've arrived. You knew this was a stupid idea, but you didn't care. <laughs> you weren't a fan of guests, but today you made an exception. Harvey seemed surprised at your gesture and replied with a smile. Only if you are sure, Harvey followed you inside, taking in the cozy warmth of your house. He took off his coat and hung it up on a hook by the door before turning to you. Damn. Harvey scanned the space around him. He watched as his eyes wandered across the room, taking in the small but tidy kitchen, the old-fashioned wood stove, and the modest living area with a well-loved leather sofa and armchair you had brought secondhand, oh, bought secondhand. This is really nice, Bill, he complimented, still looking around. You've done a great job of the place, especially for a short time you have been here. Thanks, Harvey, you replied, feeling a warmth in your chest. You put a lot of effort into fixing up the old farmhouse since you had moved in and making it a cozy and loving space. It felt good to have someone finally appreciate it. 
Harvey made his way to the couch and sat down, and you sat next to him. You began to talk about the little changes you had made to the place, pointing out the new curtains you had sewn, the refurbished oak dining table that now sat in the corner. Harvey listened intently. He had also noticed the photos on the wall, the photos of you at your graduation, and selfies of your friends that you left in Zuzu City. He noticed how some of the frames were empty, and wondered if there were photos that you had taken down because they reminded you too much of your old life. Damn, that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, an inescapable feeling of nausea washed over you. Oh god, I think I'm gonna be sick. You jumped up from the sofa, quickly moving towards the direction of the bathroom. You stumbled a little, the alcohol making your movements unsteady. Harvey immediately jumped up as well, following you into the bathroom to make sure, make sure you were okay. You managed to make it to the toilet just in time, your body heaving as you threw up the contents of your stomach. Harvey held your hair back, rubbing your back in a soothing manner. It's okay, Poppet. I'm here. He reassured in a loving nature that you weren't used to. After a few minutes, you finished throwing up and leaned back against the wall, breathing heavily, embarrassed beyond belief. I'm so sorry, Harvey, you said, feeling embarrassed and weak. Harvey shook his head, his expression full of concern whilst, not, whilst you, uh, he knelt beside you, his arm on your shoulder. Don't apologize, it's just your body voiding the alcohol in your system. You appreciated Harvey's kind words, but still couldn't shake the feeling of humiliation. It wasn't like you to lose control like this, especially not in front of someone you cared for. You looked up at Harvey, feeling vulnerable and exposed. Mm. But instead of judgment... <laughs> but instead of judgment, all you saw was a genuine concern in his eyes. Mm. Harvey helped you clean up, handing you a glass of water to rinse your mouth. He began to giggle to himself as he watched you stumble to the sink to clean up. I'm such an idiot, you shouted at yourself, annoyed you have let yourself get like this to begin with. Bill, you are not an idiot. Harvey helped you to the sofa carefully, ensuring you had a bowl to be sick into, if needed, and a glass of water beside you. You fell down and sat sprawled across the sofa, Harvey sitting next to you at the end. Harvey watched you closely, making sure you were okay. He could tell you were feeling embarrassed. He reached over and gently rubbed your back in a comforting gesture. Sheesh, this is fucking <laughs> awesome! I love this book! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll popcorn you here, bud. Alright, thank you. <laughs> it's okay, we all make mistakes, he said softly. And it's better to make them in the comfort of your own home with a friend nearby than out in public where anything could happen. He chuckled. Silently amused as you gazed up at him, hopelessly like a lost puppy. You giggled back, knowing the ridiculousness of the situation you had both found yourself in. Harvey placed a blanket over you as he draped across the back of the chair, ensuring that you were comfortable and settled in for tonight. Bill, I'm glad I found you, Harvey stated, his cheeks somewhat blushing. You turned to meet his gaze. I'm glad I found you too, you whispered. Harvey edged closer to you on the sofa, your bodies only sent uh, millimeters apart. You found yourself loosening yourself in his eyes, noticing the flicks of green and gold in his irises as shown in the light. It was then that you realized just how close the two of you were, both emotionally <laughs> and distance. <laughs> hey. Your heart began to race as you became more aware of his presence. You could feel the heat from his body, the breath of, on your face. You wanted to lean into him and feel his arms around you, but you were frozen, unable to move in awe of this man before you. <laughs> Harvey's hand brushed against yours, sending shivers up down your spine. Any physical touch right now would send you wild. I can see why they put the mature label on this now. <laughs> <laughs> it begins now. Yeah. Oh my god, is he gonna be like, oh no. <laughs> you turned your hand over and interlocked your fingers with his, feeling the warmth and comfort in the simple gesture. It was a small action, but it felt like a huge step for the both of you, smiling ear to ear at one another. You leaned in slowly, your eyes locking his. Oh god, is this it? it, it this is it, isn't it? it? It has to be! You told yourself in your head, panicked, but he's setting in at the same time. Suddenly, Harvey's 
His phone rang, interrupting your conversation. He quickly checked the caller ID and sighed. I'm sorry, Bill. I must take this. Harvey's attention was now focused on the call. His aunt. He answered, and the call was somewhat short and brief. Finally, Damn. Yeah, we. <laughs> Damn it, we got fucking cockblock by the phone! <laughs> Finally, Harvey hung up and turned to you with a serious expression on his face. I'm sorry, Bill. I have to go. There's an emergency at the clinic and they need me there right away. He felt a pang of disappointment, but understanding the seriousness of the situation. Of course, go ahead, you said, standing up from the sofa. Harvey quickly put on his coat and rushed out the door, leaving you alone in your cozy home. He didn't even say goodbye. He just left. Damn, what the fuck? Stop doing this to me, man! <laughs> You felt a sudden sense of emptiness as you watched him disappear down the, the pathway. You sighed as you walked back to, over to your couch with, with a packet of sweets from the cupboard, sitting down and staring at, at the fire, Milo wrapping himself in your embrace. Your mind couldn't rest and the alcohol was still present, enhancing your emotions further. You felt the, the surge of worry for him and prayed that everything would be okay at the clinic, not knowing who was hurt or ill. However, a, however, a part of you wept. You thought about how close you were finally getting to Harvey, and how it would feel like the universe had played a cruel joke on you. You had nearly kissed in another, in one another presence, but not this time. It simply wasn't meant to be. It, bro, he just it has to do doctor things. It's not. You can see him the more. <laughs> God, Bill's, yeah, Bill's an idiot. <laughs> you felt a, a few more tears gently escape your eyes before you drifted off into a deep slumber, Milo whining by your side, unaware of your sadness. Your hungover tomorrow will be lethal. Man, what the fuck? It's morning. over. Yeah, morning. Oh, it was all a dream. <laughs> Watch it be that. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? It's all a dream, and you awake on spring day one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we revert back. <laughs> no, like I'm imagining, like we never left like the bar, and we like blacked out drunk, and we had the, this dream, and we woke up in like the fucking alley with bottles surrounding us. <laughs> <laughs> and Shane just passed out beside you. Oh no! Why'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> morning. The the next morning arrived with the pounding headache and the in a queasy stomach. You groaned and opened your eyes, trying to adjust to the sunlight that was peeking through the curtains. You slowly sat up and immediately regretted it as the room spun around you in some sort of ver vertigo spell. Yep. Uh, fuck yeah, let's go. The memories of the Plus night- <laughs> I forgot we had the counter. <laughs> The memories of the night before flooded back to your mind, and you cringed as you recall throwing up in front of him. You wondered if you were, if you had made a fool of yourself, and if Harvey would even want to see you again after that gorgeous performance. Your, <laughs> what did I say that wrong? No, it was just a funny sentence. Oh, okay. <laughs> your mind also wondered if about what the medical emergency could have been, and whoever was ill was okay. As you looked around, you saw the re the remnants of the previous night scattered around the living room. Empty glasses of water, a fat even bag of sweets, the blanket you and Harvey had been snuggled under. I, th I, um, I thought there was another comma, so I thought Milo was just like, throw? <laughs> <laughs> Milo, who was laying on the floor by your feet, lifted his head and, and whined softly, sensing your sadness. You reached out and gave him a gentle pat, grateful for his comforting presence. You forced yourself to get up and make your way to the kitchen, where you hoped to find some aspirin to help alleviate your headache. Finally finding the aspirin, you swallowed a couple pills with a glass of water and sat down at the kitchen table, resting your head on your head. Now, resting your head on your hands, sorry! <laughs> As you, as you poured the rest of the water down the sink, you felt your head dizzy again. You decided to push on and ignore your symptoms. You refused to be defeated so easily by your emotions and f physical state. It was your fault, after all. It was raining outside, thankfully. Therefore, you didn't have to go outside and tend to your normal duties. Your chickens had plenty of hay for today, bef 
before and a heater inside their pen as the weather changed in this chilly weather. A winter chill- fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking up, I was doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> you settled down to the sofa with Milo, your head still aching. You switched the TV to see the weather forecast. The weather forecast showed you a heavy rain was expected for the next few days. Suddenly, a bang came from your front door. You recognized Marnie's voice calling from the door. Bill, I have something important some something important to inform you about. She called. You quickly jumped up on to into your wait. <laughs> wait a minute. You quickly, you quickly jumped up in your your I think that this is what pajamas okay, I guess pajamas and rushed to the door. The same dizzy feeling overcoming you as you ran. The alcohol is not yet voided. Marnie, what's going on? You asked, your voice ending with worry. It's Gus. He's he had an accident. No, oh, no. not our Bart. No, 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 no. The source of alcohol. Yeah, no. Oh my god, me and Shane must be devastated right now. Damn <laughs> <laughs> it, Shane. It this it, it was him. <laughs> it's all his fault. No, Shane would never destroy the source. Yeah, I guess you're right. Alright, chapter 14. You're my hero. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, is this what Harvey had to deal with last night? Oh, you think so? Maybe. Yeah, you think Gus is the person that, like, hold on, there's a, there's a thing going on right now. Did Gus get jumped? Did he get thrown to a bush? I, do. I don't know. Maybe, like, he was really firm to Pam about, like, her tab, and then she, like, jumped him. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out in a second. Okay. Uh, chapter 14. You're my hero. <laughs> it's Gus. He's had an accident. She sighed, looking as if she was about to burst into tears in front of you. Your heart raced as you heard Marnie's words. Gus, the owner of the Star Troop Saloon, was and one of the most beloved members of the community, had been in an accident? Is he okay? You asked, worry and fear evident in your voice. What happened, Marnie? Marnie took a deep breath before speaking. He fell down the ladder to, to uh, he fell down the ladder to the cellar. He was found unconscious this morning and rushed to the clinic last night. This is why Harvey had left so abruptly. What? Wait, mind... <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I, have, I have no idea. He just fell down. He he was found this morning and rushed to the clinic last night. Uh, I feel <laughs> wait, Yeah, that's, wait. Hold yeah, on. that's hurting my brain. <laughs> wait, maybe. No, no, I can't justify it. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was just supposed to be both. He was unconscious as last night and rushed to the clinic last night. I have no idea. I mean, unless they're counting 12 a.m. as like morning, then that might be. No, good. unless he went to the clinic last night, went back, and then he fell again. Then he went unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? That's the story. <laughs> right, too. <laughs> this is why Harvey had left so abruptly. Your mind instantly fell on Gus. You had known him since you arrived in Pelican Town, and he had always been kind and generous to you. What are his injuries? You prodded, needing to know the full extent of the story. Dr. Harvey rushed him in and carried out several tests. He had said Gus had a major skull fracture. Jesus. He has been up all night operating. We are waiting on news from the clinic currently, Marnie stuttered, the pain evident in her voice. Your heart sank as you heard the news. Gus was not a young man, and such an injury could have been serious con could have had serious consequences. So this is life threatening, you added, finally knowing the full extent. Is there anything we can do? you asked, looking at Marnie hopelessly, your tone panicked. Harvey and Maru are doing the best they can, Marnie replied, her own voice shaking. Mayor Lewis has organized a meeting at Pierce. He wants everyone to come together in this trying time. You had dealt with seeing serious injuries in the city. On the sidewalks, you had seen people being tended to by ambulances and paramedics. In the end, you had just become desensitized to the site. However, in a community as small as Pelican Town, in any major emergency was heartbreaking. You all knew one another inside and out and the thought of one of you being hurt or ill was devastating. 
Snapping out of your thoughts, you nodded, quickly grabbing your coat and slipping into your boots. You didn't even bother to change out of your pajamas. You were too focused on getting to the piers to see how you could help. Your hair was knotted and your eyes were dark and solemn. Your mind ached for Gus and worried for Harvey. You practically ran to piers, your heart racing. You burst through the doors to see the townsfolk gather, each comforting one another. That's when you saw Emily weeping and huddled in the corner, Haley and Leia next to her. Emily worked alongside Gus and they were very good friends from the years of service together. You rushed over to comfort her too. As you approached Emily, you could see the tears streaming down her face. She was hugging her knees to her chest. Haley and Leia looked up as you approached, offering you a sad smile before turning back to Emily. You knelt down beside Emily, wrapping your arms around her in a comforting embrace. I'm here for you, Emily, you whispered, uh, rubbing soothing circles on her back. She quickly hugged back. You felt her body loosen up as she gave into your embrace. He's going to be okay. Harvey is amazing at what he does. He smiled weakly, offering a sh reassurance. I know, it's just hard, she replied, her voice cracking up as she spoke. Wait, how is uh, Emily related to um, Gus? Is oh, she like Emily works with him? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wait, is she the? Um... Does she have blue hair? Yeah. Okay, that's her. Okay. Yeah, that's also Haley's sister. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Did they literally was... just said this, my guy? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too into the injury part. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm too into kidding. the atmosphere to even look into uh, family relationships. Yeah. <laughs> You're too invested in uh, Gus's major injury right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to look into how he was found this morning, but <laughs> went to the clinic last night. Yeah. That, My detective really brain is working. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the case with this one. <laughs> I, I sense foul play. <laughs> okay, hours passed. You all confided in one another as you waited for Harvey's verdict. In the meantime, you did your best to offer comfort and support to those around you. You hugged Emily tightly and held her hand as she sat in silence. While Haley and Leia shared stories of happier times with Gus, uh, you had also offered water and food to all the townsfolk, including Evelyn and George, who were being comforted by Alex and Sam. You realized how stressful this must be on the townsfolk, as they had known Gus way longer than you had. You just wanted to help as much as you could. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Maru emerged from the hospital room. Gus is going to be okay, she sighed, exhausted. Yippee! A wave of... <laughs> there we go. A wave of relief washed over you, and the others gathered in the waiting room. You all let out a collective sigh and hugged one another. The thought of losing such a beloved member of the community was almost unbearable. How is he? you asked Maru, eager for any information, others looking as if they wanted to ask that question too. His, le his level's uh, stabilized and it may take him a couple of hours to come round, but he'll recover, Maru explained. Her voice shaky with emotion. He's going to be bedbound for a while, though. You nodded, forever grateful for Harvey and Maru's work. You knew that the community would come together to support Gus no matter what. I need to go see him, Emily said, wiping away her tears. He's going to need us all there for him. The doctor asked if you could wait until he at wakes. Wait. The doctor asked if you could wait until he wakes to see him. He is going to be confused and spaced out for a while, Maru finished. Harvey had done it again. He had saved Gus's life, just like he saved yours. A wave of gratitude and admiration washed over you as Maru explained the details of Gus's condition and how Harvey had operated on him. Harvey's skills seemed to know no bounds, and this was evident through his work. As Maru spoke, he glanced around the room and saw the relief etched on everyone's faces. He knew that the entire community would be grateful to Harvey for the rest of their lives. He felt a sense of pride that you were right, you, you were part of this tight-knit group where people looked out for each other and were always ready to lend a helping hand. Feeling emotionally drained but also relieved, he hugged Emily and the others as you made your way out of tears. 
You were grateful that Gus was going to be okay, but you also felt a sense of sadness that he had to go through this ordeal to begin with. You knew he would have no choice but to step down from his role at the saloon. As you walked out into the fresh air, you saw that the rain had stopped and the sun was beginning to set. You took a deep breath and closed your eyes, feeling the cool breeze on your face. You knew that even though the day had been filled with stress and worry, there was still some form of beauty in the world. You paused before you walked past the clinic. You wanted to check in on Harvey, who were also very worried about him. Alright, I'll popcorn you here. Yeah, I like how we're worried about Harvey, not Gus. <laughs> <laughs> As you walk- Yeah, it's about- it's a Harvey X-Reader, not Gus X-Harvey X-Reader. <laughs> this isn't a three-way. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Anyway. <laughs> As you walked into the clinic, you saw Harvey sitting at his desk, running away in the medical journal. His hair was not in his usual neat and tidy fashion. His shirt was unbuttoned, and his red tie was hanging loosely around his neck, as if he had- fin Fuck. You got it? <laughs> Frantically pulled. Yeah. Yay! You got it. <laughs> Particularly pulled. <laughs> his his eyes were heavy and dull. His usual friendly smile no longer present. He quickly looked at you as you walked in. You could see the fatigue. Yeah, the fatigue, enched in on t on his face. Hey, how's Gus? You gently. He asked gently. He's doing better. He said with a small smile. Thanks to you. You sp weakly smiled. <laughs> Walking closer to him and reached out to a place a comfortable. Wait. <laughs> Walking closer to him and reaching out to place a comforting hand on his shoulder. Now, and how are you holding up? You asked. Harvey's tired smile faded slightly, replaced with a by a concerned look. I'm doing fine, he replied. Just tired. I've been up all night. You didn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You knew Harvey w well enough to know that he was trying to hide something by now. Harvey, I know you. You said softly. And I know you're not fine. What's going on? Harvey hesitated for a moment, his eyes flickering around the, on the ground. This, this has been a lot, he finally admitted. Imagine having someone's life in your hands, and then failing to keep them alive. He sighed, looking down at his journal. That sort of stuff haunts you forever. He began to empathize with, with how Harvey must have been feeling at that moment before you. Harvey, you didn't fail. You kept them alive. You're a hero, you reassured, kneeling beside him. Harvey looked down at you with a pained expression. But what about the next time? What if I'm not quick enough, or if I made a mistake? He said, his voice trembling. Harv, you can't save everyone. I understand, but but so far you have. You saved my life when I first arrived here. You have an incredible gift and you use it to help so many people. Harvey looked up at you, his eyes filled with tears. But that's my job, my duty as a doctor, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I know, you said, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. And you're doing a great job, but you need to take care of yourself too. You can't, you can't keep carrying the weight of the worries about everyone in the town on your shoulders. You have to give yourself a break. Harvey nodded slowly, his expression softening. Thanks, Bill, he said, giving you a small smile. You always know what to say. He chuckled weakly, looking down at you. He, you giggled too, standing up to embrace him. Now I'll watch Gus for you. Take a small break. Yay! We did it! We're getting closer! Hey. That was like the four heart event. <laughs> 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 Yippee! <laughs> a week later! <laughs> is that enough time for a skull to to uncrack? <laughs> I am no doctor. Yeah, I'm not either. <laughs> A week on and Gus was back at home where Emily had temporarily moved in to monitor him. Everyone was now had now visited Gus, providing him with bouquets of flowers and chocolates. Despite the whole ordeal, Gus seemed to be happy and appreciated to be alive. He was on a steady road to recovery to the relief of the town. Harvey had been 
reward with similar treatments. He was currently the town's hero. Mayor Lewis had shown his own individual gratitude for Harvey's work, and Gus had told Harvey personally that he would drink for free at the saloon anytime he wanted. People were bringing him gifts, kind compliments, or just generally expressing their gratitude for everything he had done. You could see his face the t you could see it in his face the times that you had bumped into him that he had realized how much he he was appreciated and loved by the community. A f sweet and upbeat smile graced his face. You had now fallen even harder than you had before. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted no more than to be close to him. But despite your feelings for Harvey, you knew that he needed time to recover from the remorseful strain of Gus's surgery. The last thing you wanted to do was overwhelm him and make him feel uncomfortable by being too pushy. So, you decided to give him some space and let him come to you when he was ready. Damn it! <coughs> Stop edging me! This is the, the f I could have married Harvey by now, you know? Just like, talk to him every day, and then give him two coffees a week. That's all you need to do. <laughs> it's just like, I imagine you just go up to him, and he just tries to ask how your morning was. You just give him a coffee and just run off. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's it. That's the dream right Shut there. Up. Here's your coffee. Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> In the meantime, you found yourself spending more and more time with the other residents of Pelican Town. You had joined on the other activities, helping with their chores, and even went on some fishing trips with Willie. However, no matter how, how much fun you had with the others, you couldn't help but think about Harvey. You wondered if he was thinking about you too. <laughs> Spoiler, I think he is. <laughs> <laughs> Day one of winter. Have we done anything? To we just found like the community center in like fall. That poor Junimo. <laughs> He's like sitting there in his little fire, like just chilling. <laughs> He's like, that girl ain't coming back, is she? <laughs> <laughs> Day one, winter. You had harvested your crops and sold them just in time for winter, making a nice profit in preparation for winter. You made sure your crops were priced fairly, as you knew how hard winter would be f for some money. Wait, <laughs> wait a minute. As you knew how hard winter can be for some money wise with the extra heating bills. As winter approached, you made sure to stock up on firewood and supplies to keep yourself warm throughout the cold months. You felt a sense of relief knowing that you had done everything you could to prepare for the harsh winter ahead. There'd actually, that'd actually be cool if there was like a mod to make your gold go like every day because of heating expenses. Ah, uh, I think probably someone's for, it. for the for the hardcore. Yeah, that's probably like a thing somewhere. <laughs> Uh, there's so many mods for Stardew Valley. I should probably like send the the big list that that there is. <laughs> I should look into some of them. Yeah. Dude, there's one where you can where um, in the game you can get a horse, and there's a there's a mod that reskins the horse to be Pam, so you ride Pam around town. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, it's a real mod. <laughs> she drives the bus and she drives you. Yeah. <laughs> She's a she's a single mom who works two jobs, <laughs> and she loves her kids and never stops. <laughs> Wait, who's her kid? Uh, Penny. Penny, okay. With your harvest sold and your preparations complete, you settle into the peaceful routine of your life on the farm, ready for winter. You would be spending your days tending to your animals and maintaining your equipment, but you were just grateful for the calm and quiet of the season. As winter rolled around, you began to feel better about the upcoming fest Feast of the Winter Star, despite not having your family around like you normal. Your community had provided fried to you, and no one would be left out, and you would not be spending the day inside, alone. Gus had made a steady recovery, returning to work at the saloon, but with a twist. Gus appointed Emily to run the saloon, a job she was more than happy to accept. Gus still owned the saloon and still helped where he could, but he had realized in his old age and his previous injury that it was time to step down. That's nice. Emily's Emily's working up. <laughs> <laughs> Emily was overjoyed when Gus offered her the opportunity to run the saloon. 
She had been working there for a few years now, learning the ins and outs of the business, and she knew that she was ready for this challenge. With Gus's guidance, she, got, she quickly got to work, revamping the menu and redecorating the space to make it more inviting. Gus, for his part, was thrilled to see the saloon thriving under Emily's leadership. She had, he had always known that she had a knack for business, and he was proud to see her putting her skills to use. He now spent most of his time relaxing in the corner booth, sipping a glass of whiskey, and watching the hustle and bustle of the business he had built. Damn, that is a life. Just sit in the corner, drink it, and just like seeing like your shit just go. <laughs> that is nice. Yeah, I wish I could just do that. <laughs> As you, as the snow rolled in, you sat on your window with Milo and a mug of hot chocolate, watching the, s the snowflakes fall down on your farm. That's when you see Harvey approach your house, uh, clearly hiding something behind his back. Oh, please tell me it's flowers and a box of chocolates. <laughs> oh, please. Wait, it's not Valentine's Day. Well, I can, I can still hope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, February is in winter. Uh, I mean, up, man. A girl can okay. hope. A girl can dream. All right. <laughs> Giving bad expectations, but all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rise a lower than the zero in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Falling by a knock at your front door, you were flustered. You quickly set down your mug of hot chocolate and went to answer the door. Milo eagerly falling behind you, wagging his tail. Is it- do we have a dog or a cat? Um... Is this a dog? Would a cat do that? I don't I know. I don't think a cat would do that. My cat would probably do it. <laughs> Your cat would fall behind you and wag her tail? I- well... We- well... Maybe. I guess it is a dog. I, wait, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a cat wag its tail. I didn't even know it was possible. Yeah, they can. They they shift it around. They can. They can express emotion other than just being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> New to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shit. Where were we before? We just went on a tangent. <laughs> uh, Milo eagerly followed behind yeah, you, wagging his tail. Okay. When you opened the door, Harvey was standing there with a small smile on his face, still holding something behind his back. Hey there, he said, his his voice warm and friendly. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Harvey stood at your door, his tall figure towering over the doorstep. His cheeks were rose from the cold winter air, making his sharp cheekbones even more defined. He was uh, bundled up in a thick, dark green coat that reached down to his knees. Damn, this is like when I go in the freezer at work and I get on that like big puffy coat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, reached to his knees. A pair of gloves covering his hands. He also- How can you see his hands? It, it, it's behind his back! <laughs> anyway! <laughs> he also wore a thick winter scarf, which was wrapped snugly around his neck. His piercing hazel eyes stoned into the warmth that contracted the chilly weather, and his lips were slightly parted with a small smile. He looked beautiful, and that was the only way you could describe it. You shook her head, trying to ignore the butterflies in your stomach. No, not at all. What brings you here? You beamed, happy to see him. Harvey finally revealed what he's hiding behind his back. A small bouquet of winter flowers wrapped in gentle paper. I told you! Oh my you. god, you're right. Alright, now where's the chocolate? Yeah, I was about to, I was about to like, oh, I just missed the chocolate, but <laughs> fuck yeah, let's go. Uh, the bouquet in uh, wrapped in paper. The bouquet in your hands was filled with an array of gorgeous colors, each shade more beautiful than the last. These flowers looked as if they'd been sent from a florist. I just wanted to check in on you and see how you're doing, he said, holding out the bouquet to you. These are for you, just as a token from me to you for everything you've done for me. Your heart fluttered in ways that you didn't know it could. <laughs> the man had never bought- a man had never bought you flowers before, not even your ex. <laughs> You reached to take the bouquet from Harvey's outreached hand, feeling a rush of warmth spread across your body. You felt your cheeks red redden and your eyes widen at the beautiful confusion. Harvey, you really shouldn't have. You beamed, unable to control your excitement. Without thinking, you wrapped your arms around his neck, standing up on your tippy toes to reach. 
Harvey's eyes widened slightly at the unexpected embrace, but he quickly composed himself and returned the hug. You felt his warmth, the slight thud of his heart beating against your chest, and the smell of his familiar cologne. It was a moment that you wanted to last forever, but you eventually released your grip and stepped back, a flush rising in your cheeks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a little carried away, you stammered, feeling embarrassed. No need to apologize, Harvey said with a kind smile. I'm glad you like the flowers. His cheeks also, uh, also now is somehow redder than before. You weren't sure what to say or do next, but you didn't want him to leave just yet. Would you like to come in for a cup of hot chocolate? You asked, gesturing to your cozy home. Harvey's face lit up at the offer. I would love that. He said, following you inside for real man's purposes. <laughs> Is this the third time now? I don't know. <laughs> third or too many to count now. Gus is gonna get injured again. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, something's gonna happen. We're gonna get close to a moment. He's like, hold on. Gus fell again. <laughs> or maybe uh what is it, Emily? Haley? Who's in charge? Oh God, Emily gets a fucking skull fracture. <laughs> <laughs> Emily gets a skull fracture. It's like and it appears that the ladder was at fault the whole time. Yeah, it's like the curse of the saloon where the, the owner at some point gets hit by a <laughs> gets hit with a skull fracture from the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So what'd you think of the chapters? It's pretty good. Hell Things yeah. are uh I, I think they're definitely interested in each other now. Yay! I'm so happy! <laughs> it's not a misunderstanding anymore, it's just now a timing problem. Yeah, I was about to say a timing issue now. <laughs> they need to be uninterrupted for at least 30 minutes. <laughs> Gus just calls in, I got a skull fracture. Harvey's like, hang on, I'm, I'm with Bill. Just, uh, can you wait, like, 30 minutes? Thanks. Yeah, can- Call you back. Can, can you postpone your injury real quick? I'm trying to do something. <laughs> <laughs> can you schedule your injury for later? Thank yeah. you. Goodbye. <laughs> Click. <laughs> oh, God. I cannot wait to see Harvey later today. This is gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what, what relationship level are you with Harvey? I bet you've been giving him gifts all the time. Every time I see him, I, like, run towards him. I'm like, Harvey! Harvey, hi! <laughs> I think I'm at two hearts. Okay. It's, it's what, se are, what season are we? Are we on summer yet, or is it still at, spring? We're at the end of spring right now, so we'll be summer. Probably during gotcha. the recording, so... We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. But, uh... I, I guess... I feel like they're gonna be the first person... Or the first person to marry Harvey. Yeah. Unless I go to him... Every week with love gifts. Wait a minute, are you gonna try marrying my husband? The time. I just steal them from you. Wow, wow, fucking Mr. Sue, your man right here. My God. <laughs> well, I already know that like Peter and Cameron are gonna get fucking married, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's a given. Yeah, maybe I should go for a different guy this time because I married Harvey and then I married Elliot. Yeah, go for Shane. I'm not marrying Shane. I yeah, go for myself. Sebastian. <laughs> you know what? No, well. Every time I, like, well, when I first played the game, it was between Alex and Elliot, and then I got to Elliot first with hearts, so I went for Elliot, and then the second time was Alex and Harvey, and then I got to Harvey first. So I think I'll go for Alex this time instead of edging. <laughs> uh. I don't know, I feel like it might, it'd be cool. Or maybe I can be crazy this time and go for a woman, who knows. Do it. Go for, um, I'll go for Leah. Abigail. Oh. <laughs> or Abigail. Oh no, I'll go for Penny. She deserves to go home. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I guess if you guys want to read this book and support the author, I'll have it linked down below in the description. Also in the description, there's a Discord server, and I would really love it if you guys joined it. <laughs> it has uh, me and a couple of my collab friends on there as well. We talk. You can also hang out with other fans that are somehow fans of me for some fucking reason. Go join it. Yeah. It's totally not a dead server <laughs> where I just keep posting and no one replies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now uh, it's it's time for everyone's favorite subject where uh, we spin the magical wheel and we see how fucked we are the next time we had to schedule a recording together. 
Oh god. Yep, yeah, it's gonna be so much fun. I would, uh, I would share screen with you, but I've come to realize that when I do that, it slows it down, like my computer, so I'm not gonna do that. But I will tell you what the result is when it comes out. So we got a lot of options. Let me hide these. That way you guys don't fucking see. Oh, that's not the- that's- oops. Alright, anyway, spin the wheel. Oh, God, that hurt- like, all the colors combined it. It kind of hurt my eyes. Okay! We have a Chorus X Reader. Oh, who's Chorus? It's the guy from Gen 5. The guy that has, like, the Internet Explorer haircut. <laughs> Explorer. Yo, 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 Chorus, he's from Pokemon Black and White 2. He uses, uh, Steel-type Pokemon. Oh, yeah, I remember him now. Yeah, yeah, so we'll be reading that, I guess, the next time we, uh, <laughs> we sit down and record. Nice. Uh, I haven't read a Pokemon fanfiction in a while. It's been a hot minute, so I guess this is a, a good start to it. <laughs> But, uh, I guess anyway, my name is Phoenix, that was Minho, and I guess we'll see you guys next time! Bye bye Bye! Uh